So I'm Simon Singh and I'm a science writer and I was here, well not here, I was at Go To Amsterdam a few years ago um, and when I was there I spoke about the history of code breaking and in particular I talked about the Enigma cipher and I demonstrated a genuine Enigma cipher. Um, here in Berlin uh, I'm talking about my, my, my most recent book which is The Simpsons and Their Mathematical Secrets. So uh, what I'll be explaining to everybody is that the Simpsons is the most mathematical TV show in history. Now, if people don't know this, it sounds very silly, it sounds like it's a joke, but it's a simple fact. Um, there is so much maths in The Simpsons. There's Pythagoras' theorem, Fermat's last theorem, P versus NP, there's geometry, there's jokes about pi, um, there's references to Euler's identity. There is so much mathematics, stretching back uh, right, right back to the very first episode. Um, and so the next question is, uh, why is there so much maths in The Simpsons? And the reason is that a lot of the writers are actually mathematicians. They have degrees in, in, in mathematics or they have master's degrees. Some of them may even have PhDs. Um, Jeff Westbrook was a professor at Yale in uh, computer science. So uh, these people are serious about their maths. Uh, but they're even more serious about their comedy. So they're now comedy writers, they're not mathematicians, but they still love maths. And the way they express their love of maths is to include little bits, uh, little equations and things in, in the programme, but, but only for, for a flash, uh, only for a split second. So if you don't know what to look for, you won't see it. And so um, I'll be outlining some of the examples um, I'll be talking a little bit about the writers and, and their motivations. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about Futurama because uh, a lot of the writers who work on The Simpsons also work on Futurama and uh, Futurama science fiction so there's a lot of science in there but there's also a lot of mathematics as well and, and I'll look at a couple of examples from there. So that's what I'll be talking about. I mean there is so much maths in The Simpsons and in Futurama that I could talk about it all day but I will try and squeeze in as much mathematics as I can. As a writer you are always looking for something to write about and that, that, that's really hard because it has to be something that I'm really passionate about. It's something that I hope other people will really be passionate about and interested in. It has to be something that other people haven't written about before. It has to be original. Um, and so finding those really good ideas are very few and far between. So this is my fifth book in 20 years. So if I find one good idea every four or five years, I'm doing well. And in fact, I haven't actually had an idea for a book for 14 years. Yeah, I think I had this idea for The Simpsons book in 2004. No, no, no. Yeah, 2004. And I started writing about it and then I got distracted. I started writing about alternative medicine and trying to critique it. Uh, I co-authored co a book with Professor Edzard Ernst. Um, and so that distracted me for a couple of years and then I got sued for libel. So that distracted me for another couple of years. Uh, and then I eventually started writing The Simpsons book probably in about 2010, 2011, 2012. So um, although it's my most recent book, it has a very long history. And uh, therefore it's been a very long time since I had an original idea. And um, part of the reason for that is that there is so much good stuff out there on the web. Um, so much free material, so much uh, humour and videos and, and long form writing and so on that um, I'm not quite so sure that there's such a big space for books anymore. You know, I love books and I love reading books and I love the fact that other people love books but um, my motivation for writing is probably not as strong as it was before because um, I just think there's new territory out there which is the blogosphere and so on. And, um, I kind of feel maybe I've done my bit. So w one of the reasons that I'm not writing and one of the reasons I'm not uh, having many ideas about writing is perhaps that I'm more focused on education at the moment. Um, there's a problem in England which is that if you're, if you're, if you're good at maths 
I think the education system doesn't really help you anymore. It sort of says, okay, you're good at maths, we can leave you alone. Um, and all the emphasis and the effort tends to go on children who are struggling. Now that's really important. If people are struggling with mathematics, we must take them from being you know, strugglers to being more confident. And if kids are okay and in the middle, we should encourage them to be good. But if kids are already good, we should try and stretch them to be excellent. And that's really important. And um, so I'm working on a project to try and stretch students uh, from the age of about 11 or 12. Because again, if, if children aren't stretched when they're young, they kind of get a bit complacent. If all the maths that they're doing is easy, um, then they're not stretching their brains. They're not ready to deal with difficult, new and original ideas and more abstract concepts. So uh, I'm working with 13 schools at the, morn at the moment and um, the results are very good. And so the, the question is, can, can we uh, show that this is really cost effective? Because there's no point just throwing money at the problem. The education system is stretched. So we have to come up with ideas that are um, financially viable, which also have a, a, a positive impact, uh, a, a, a measurable impact on those good kids. Are we really helping them to be excellent? Uh, and then another project, which is, which is more international, uh, which, which viewers may be interested in, uh, is something called Parallel. I've started a website called parallel.org.uk, parallel.org.uk. And the idea of this website is that on a Friday, actually no, it's on a Thursday, um, in the afternoon we release about 15 or 20 minutes of maths that children can do. We have uh, one sheet that's available for 11-year-olds, um, one for 12-year-olds, one for 13-year-olds, and they were designed for our students working in our excellence project. Um, but we have about 3,000 children now who are doing it every week. And it's uh, maths problems and riddles and videos, sometimes a bit of philosophy. It's kind of anything to stretch their brains and um, to see the world a bit more differently and to see mathematics and how it fits into the world. So um, that's kind of taking up most of my time at the moment.